YouTubers and friends, thanks for joining us again on this Tuesday night hangout live with my good friends Toledo, Jess, Dano, and I. Uh, we have a couple of really cool guests tonight. Uh, the newest, youngest, pro-am metal detectorist for Mind Lab, Maddie, and his dad, Matthew. And, um, Tom, uh, any, oh, geez, I know I'm butchering their last name. I'm sorry, Maddie and Matthew, but we'll be right back with them and my two pals right after this. Hey, YouTubers and friends, thank you for joining us. I see we have a lot of you in the house tonight. A lot of old friends and a couple of new. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and become part of the notification crew and hit that bell and you'll be notified of all things we do. Um, now, Toledo, Jess, and Dano, come up. Show your faces, dude. It's oh, uh, our time. I'm disguised oh, as a uh, pan of gold. Oh, <laughs> not me. How are you two today? Doing good. Not too bad. I'm good. all excited about uh coming up event. Oh, gold yeah. Rush gold days. Rush Days is coming gold Rush, up. Yeah. And we got our, our gold week. rush days happen at the Swankers in, in two weekends. Uh, yeah, the week after this one coming up, Labor yep. Day weekend, and Jesse and I and Dano and the Flash in Your Pan crew. Uh, it's our maiden voyage for Take a Vet Prospecting Project, right? Yes, uh, sir. All yeah. right. We have yeah. stuff a happening. That's yeah, right. I, I got a cool stuff. gift in the mail from one of our past guests. What uh, was that? Uh, what? A book from Chris Ralph. Wow, cool. This full of gold. It's really good. And he, he wrote in a nice little thing to us. Can you see it? Can you see it? Uh, no. I sound too much like Aqua Jigger when I do that. <laughs> but um yeah i was stoked to see it i was wondering where it was at um but um do we have any other news we talked about our trip to vermont last week right so oh but i did get a heck of a lot more color than i thought i did but yeah i did, did too but i don't you know here adam's in the room I have to show him a picture of it. I won uh, Adam's Diggings when we were up there. Yeah, because you got the name of Coolidge right, who he was, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But when he brought it to me, you know, I didn't really have any place to dump it other than what I already had, a little bit of cons I already had. So you don't know what he had and what you found. Correct. But I don't. You know, no big deal. The total is what counts. You know, oh, it was yeah, pretty good. That's what counts. Yep. 
All right, so, guys. Thank you, Adam. I don't know how much you gave me, but I'll show you a picture, <laughs> and you'll be able to tell me. <laughs> we're we're having the prime time lag, guys, for a little bit. I'm in the yeah, orange. I, I know my you. my YouTube pros. Well, but I'm not dropping packets, and I have a green solid green signal on 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 my end, so it has uh -huh. to be prime time on YouTube. That's all I can say. They better I recognize we're the big people. They need to take care of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm getting tired of this second okay. second class. We need to be first class. <laughs> well, we are. Like, like, maybe right. when we get a million subscribers or several there we go. hundred we got, thousand. We got you back now. There you are, Ed. Well, yeah, I, I'm still... It ain't still the greatest. It's a low output, but hopefully... I'll keep my fingers crossed. I don't want to cross my thumb because... I got a boo boo today. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm I heard just about your scratch. Oh, you wish it was a scratch. There's women in the room where I'd show you guys. Oh, no, man. I wouldn't, because then I'd have to sit here and redress it again. Oh, I'm super glue works well. I don't think super glue would have worked so well for this. I know it works good for some cats. And stuff. Just dump your whole thumb in it. <laughs> yeah. <I'm, laughs> but let's just say I'm glad you're not calling me stumpy right now. <laughs> I, I need my digits. I need my digits. I, I just hope it's healed enough so I can play in the creek over Labor Day weekend with our veteran guests. Yes, it, our actually our 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 veteran guests are members of the local chapter of the uh, Wounded Warriors organization. Now, hmm. uh, Wounded Warrior organization, they have a lot of bad rap, and a lot of people don't like to donate money to them. And I really don't like to either. So I thought the next best thing was for us to maybe take some vets out. Um, and these guys happen to be, and I, and I actually picked these guys for a reason. They happen, uh, they're wounded warriors, first of all, but they're part of the board of the local chapter. And I figured if I got them out there and they enjoyed it, they would work a little bit harder to get a, a, a program going for us to be able to do this more often with them. Yeah, or even go to their halls and do demos and stuff like well, yeah, we do with the Cub Scouts and whatnot. Right, yep. right on. Yep. And they'll, they'll even get a taste of the lifestyle of other treasure hunters while they're at Gold Rush Days with the metal right. detecting hunts put on by um, Patrick O'Masters and Jen and Susie Q. Uh, yeah, Susie so that Weiss. should be fun. We're going to do a few things with them, teach them how to pan, show them what all is involved in, uh, you know, just teach them how to prospect. Some Try of, to give them a relaxing weekend. Yeah, yeah. give them a nice weekend to, you know, relax and learn how to pan and find some gold, and, you know, just get away from it for a little bit. Right. And And, and the biggest thing of all, have some fun. Have some fun. That's right. Have some have fun. Because it's all about fun. Are we having fun yet? Always. Always. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for Labor Day weekend. I think it's going to be a good time. Hey, Ronald, Chris, the hookers. Yep. Hey, Ronald. Yeah, Luke Ronald, Duke. the hooks in the house. And Mr. Uh, Chris Dyer is in the house, too, tonight. Busted Knuckles is in the house. How you guys yeah. doing? Bob and Ohio Melly Oh, we have uh, digging connect in the house oh, yeah. tonight. Thanks some, for coming. Usually has some cool questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, Duke. We might take a chance Angelina. and open up the phone lines. We have Harley Davidson Shovelhead in the house. Uh, Paul's wife, you know, T name. Uh, Miner's wife. 
Right. We have our oh. few of our friends from the land down under in the house tonight. This Wayne Peterson guy here. Let's see. Oh, that Hi, nugget brain dude. <laughs> Yes, that nugget brain dude. Our, our, our <laughs> Ohio guest, Dave Villa. Oh, excuse me, Via. New England Gold Prospecting. Yeah, that's Kevin. How you doing, Kevin? Thanks for Kevin. Patrick. I see Patrick in there now. Yeah, Jay. Hey, Bree, Patrick, I have a bone to I pick don't. with you. Don't send Dano text messages during the show. <laughs> At least it was John, a show. Tell him. Bellum. I turn my volume down. How you doing? I guess that's how you pronounce it. I probably chopped it up. But hey. Sean and Thomas, folks. Lucky Daddy. Oh, there's Tom. Lucky, Lucky Hey, Thomas. Scotty Tony. What's up, buddy? Scott, Randy Scotty Tony. All right. Welcome, everybody. Please bear there. with the stream. Hopefully, it will clean up here before too long. After all, we are prime time. Uh, feel like bringing in our guests? Oh, yeah. yeah Let's bring them in. in. Oh, oh. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, bring them in. Oh, Mr. Tim for Gold. Hey, Tim, Sarah. He says hey, hello. Tim. Yep. All right. I'll, I'll make Maddie and Matthew large. So you there two guys. can get back to your pictures if you want. I'm incognito now. <laughs> now Maddie's like wondering, who do we talk to? I don't see no one but a little miner in a geode and a gold <laughs> pan. <laughs> Just talk to the camera. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Okay. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. How about introducing yourselves? I'm Maddie. I'm the son of my dad. No way. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. That's cool. <laughs> Go on. Uh -huh. I'm a smart Alec. I'm sorry. Uh, don't, Go don't take us too serious, Maddie. <laughs> I'm Matthew Tomaney. This is my son, Maddie. He's also known as Digging with Maddie. I'm also known as either Matt T or Jersey Digger, depending on which page you go to. And I do have a link in the description below for Maddie's page, uh, Digging Adventures, the home of Digging with Maddie. Is that yeah. right? Yes. yes. And I did butcher your last name. Sorry about that. <laughs> How'd you say it? Put that to the oh, I, I, I don't want to all butcher it again, and I don't want to do that to you, Matthew. It's, <laughs> it's, it's Tomani. So. Tomani. Yeah. Sounds Italian. It is. Every time I try to pronounce somebody's name, I always butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> well... Good. I, I'm not alone with that, Maddie. <laughs> I'm not alone then. Okay. Hell, my name gets butchered. My last name gets butchered. It's so easy. <laughs> they butcher your first name, too. <laughs> Somebody tried to be funny and said, Hey, Maddie Tomato. <laughs> That's not All right. So what are we talking about tonight? Uh, your lifestyle. Right. Let's let's let's. How about a little bit of history about you guys? Okay. Who you want to go first? Me oh, either one. You were probably here first. Yeah. You tell I, us how you got your son in, involved in this. <laughs> um, or did he get you involved in it? I actually got him involved in it. I okay. In uh, twenty something years, I just started detecting in March of nineteen ninety three. Uh, I got interested in detecting back when I was going to Virginia Tech. I lived to, um, next to this guy who was metal detect, and he had a collection of Civil War artifacts that was worth hundreds of thousands of dollars at the time, and that was back in the early 90s. And I, I would go over his house, and have him, every time i go over his house, I'd have him show me something else. He would show me buttons, buckles, bullets, and I, and I said, I have to get a metal detector. 
as soon as I moved, moved home, got married, I bought myself a metal detector. Uh, and you've been insane ever since, huh? <laughs> insane before, but now I'm even more insane, yes. <laughs> You'd make a good prospector, too, man. Uh, <laughs> there is gold in Jersey, too. There is? Besides the rings you find on the beach. I don't know if there's any natural gold in Jersey. I know there's a lot of gold on the beach now. <laughs> yeah. There's, um, out of all of the states, only 40, like, I believe 47 of them have natural gold, and New Jersey's not one of them. Um, I believe that's the number. Is that what it is? I'm pretty sure Jersey came up in a talk for a time for natural gold, but... I could be wrong. I know you're uh, uh, an honor roll student and all, Maddie, so I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm just trying to remember this off the top of my head. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tell them about um, what else you want to know about me before we get into Maddie. Jesse? Oh, uh, well, let me unmute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are there? So I, I don't want to. Money kind of piqued your interest when you first started. Uh, are you still that way? Money? I, I think it was more piqued my interest of not knowing what you're going to find each time you, you find something. You dig, go to dig. You, you never know what it is. When you have an idea, and it's the excitement of finding something. Uh, it just gets to you every time. Maybe I've been doing this for 20-something years, and every time I, I use my scoop in the water or I dig a hole with the shovel, I'm so excited every time. Well, because you – the reason I asked that was because you, you said you were you went over to the sky, you, you had all this stuff worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, let's see, being young, in school – seeing somebody with a collection like that and, and thinking how easy it would be to make that kind of money. I'm sure that might have been a little bit of a nudge towards looking for, uh, looking for, you know, treasures. Well, I know I've always wanted to find treasure. Yeah, I always wanted to find treasure too. But it was never about the money. I don't really sell too much of my stuff. Only the, like the scrap pieces of gold and the change. Everything else I've been keeping for years. Well, no, I, I realize that, you know, as you get older, you realize that, that that's not the most important part of what you're doing anymore, right. you know. So. I think I wanted to go out and find some part of history when I first Right, started. right. I mean, we go out looking for gold, uh, natural gold and stuff, you know, and, and a lot of it is just that being hunt. full and stuff like that and you know hanging out with like-minded people uh yeah the money's not that great you definitely don't not at prospecting because <laughs> we no. we spend thousands on our gear in a vehicle put it in a vehicle worth several hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> and find yeah. find a few dollars worth of gold but it's the adventure the camaraderie um Right. And sometimes we're lucky, you know, we'll find something of like old bottles or wagon wheels or arrowheads. Yeah. Arrowheads, you know, the the the, the metal around it, the wheel. Okay, here you go, Maddie. Pioneer Barbie. Polly has a question. Okay, go ahead. Um what are both of your favorite finds so far? Uh, you want us to show them? Sure. Uh, Mine's in a special case. <laughs> uh, you show your first. Mine, you go ahead. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> Mine. My favorite find is a two real from 1774. That's it. Which is, can you see that? Yeah. It's a bit of a glare, but. Yeah, that's all right. You got it where you can see it. Yeah. 
That's cool. That's you cool. find that on the beach? No, I found that while dirt detecting at an old farm site. When I pulled it up, I was like, ooh, it's a brand new King George. When I looked at it, he goes, that's not King George. Flip it around. <laughs> Uh, and I'll show you my favorite find now. Dang nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so have you had have you had that ring checked out? Yeah. That's a really cool ring. That's a lot of diamonds. Uh, yeah, it is. Two hundred and eighty-three diamonds. The setting is European. It's uh white gold. It's uh stamp five eighty five on the inside and all the diamonds were tested in real. Nice. It's the size of a Super Bowl ring, a World Championship ring, but there's nothing on it. Like the same exact size though. That's some bling there. Yeah, somebody, some guy's bling. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you ever do any like uh, recovery for couples who lost wedding rings or anything, like some guys do, like uh, yeah. Josh? Can't. We Can't got asked. To, we got asked to sign up for a couple of them sites, but I, I just don't have the time. If I was out there looking for somebody else's stuff, I can't be finding stuff for myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, you know. I mean, somebody lost this, and they didn't contact me to find it, so it's mine. <laughs> I, I, I grew up with that finders keepers losers <laughs> weepers <laughs> I mean I think it would be different if you had some kind of clue as to where who it belonged to if they had a name or something on there it might be a little different Maybe a, uh, mostly I see people returning class rings yeah I have quite a few of those too that you can't I can't return from the, they're like 1931 oh yeah yeah they're yeah. long gone I got this one here, 1931, and it's like awesome. For, I mean, the person would be 101, I think it will be figured out. Right. Five today. Oh. And you just have to subtract 19 from 2018 minus. 19. Well, we figured he was 18 at the time, so that's 100. <laughs> right. Okay. So most of the people were 18 or 17 when they bought got their class ring. So it was either 100 or 101 right now. Okay. They're at least a hundred years old. Yeah. Uh, good chance they're not even with us anymore. No, I mean, and then some of these, the school doesn't have a school name; it just has an A on the front. So, it, or a letter, a letter of the school, and you're like, how many schools back in 1930 started with the letter A <laughs> in the whole United States? How much? <laughs> Right, right. Who it was, and then find out who it was that lost the ring. If there's some, uh, it just makes it impossible. But it looks real nice in my collection. So. Yeah, and it does. <laughs> it sure does. Uh, hold, hold up, uh, hold up that so you case of your collection. I do. Yeah. Did you want to see, see that? Look at this, guys. Uh, nice. Ta -da. Yep. Ta -da. A lot of nice rings. Well, yes, sir. I come home from work and look at them every day. I bet. I try to avoid them. <laughs> uh, Bob, uh, I mean Bill Marsh, um, in the room, Ohio Relic Hunter, still using the thirty thirty, or do you guys use the Knox now? I uh, know the answer to some of that, I think, but go ahead, Matthew. Uh, I used the 3030 since 2013, and this year when I got the Knox in March, I think it was first week in March, I figured I would give it a year to see how I'm doing. Uh, last year I had 43 gold rings. This year I have 19 so far. So I'm almost on pace from last year. So it, it's... And I think it hits the gold a lot better than the CTX, but the CTX hits everything else much better. So, all depends on what you want. If you want the gold, use the Equinox. If you want a lot of the other items like silver, I would use the CTX. 
Now I, I take it the 3030s waterproof to a degree also because Correct. you do a lot of water detecting from an article I read. I do most. I prefer mostly water detecting, and then uh, if the if the weather's bad and you can't get out in the water because it'd be rough, then I'll choose anything else I could do because I like to detect. So. I like wide open spaces. And uh, Maddie likes farm fields and beaches. I like wide open spaces because in the water I can't see my coil. I'm, and water makes it so you have to swing slower. It's just not my type of place. Well, well, afterwards. Um, I have a message here for you. I don't know if you're reading the chat at all, Matthew and Maddie. But yes. our, our friend Bill Marsh, the Ohio Relic Hunters, had two great guys right there. I met them both at CWPPO. Yes, that was in Ohio. And, uh, we didn't go last year, but I went the la the two previous years, and Maddie went uh, two years ago with me. And I guess that's the one we met him at. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think, I, I meet so many new people, yeah. and it's hard to remember everybody. And, and I apologize. Uh, everybody I met there was great, 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 great people. So. Yeah. Yeah, we we had the founder of that on our show a few months ago, didn't we, Jesse? Yeah, Sam. Yeah, Sam yeah, Waters. It was, yeah, a couple of months ago. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah. I think she got married to Sam Creedy now, right? Or something. Um. Yeah. Just not too long ago, her husband was on with us. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. yeah, they're two great people. Those two. Yeah, uh, funny. <laughs> That was a good. That was a good show. You, you, if, if if you didn't catch that show, you can always go back to the, find it on there. Yeah, uh, you go months. to the uh, Tuesday night hand out loud playlist and look for it. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I missed that one. Well, do me a favor, Matthew. When we're done, when you have time tomorrow after work or something. Go back, watch the show, give her a thumbs up, and comment. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. <laughs> we are a subscriber already. I subscribed oh. earlier. <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay. Excellent. Uh, I, I, I don't think so, Wayne, but I'll ask him. <sighs> Wayne Peterson <laughs> wants to know, does he eat gold rings to find more gold rings? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I think that would hurt a lot more than a two-gram nugget coming yeah. out of the old woo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to ask. Well, so it is, it is Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wayne asked that because he has the Nugget Brain Challenge. And so far, only a couple of those crazy Australians have taken him up on it. Uh, you eat a nugget. You <laughs> it into a pan, of course, because you don't want to do it into the toilet bowl and flush it down. Then you repan it. Clean it up, eat it again for 30 days. Yep. Repeat for 30 days. And <laughs> it's supposed to it's supposed to help you find more gold. Yeah. <laughs> now, David Buckle, our friend from Tasmania, says it works. Hey, Sean, busted knuckles. Does it work, buddy? <laughs> Does it work? Because uh, I believe Sean did it. Uh, he said you ought to eat a fishing hook picker. <laughs> yes, he did. Busted knuckles did. <laughs> no, thank I, you. The small chance that I were to ever do that, if I did, I would just let it go down the toilet and <laughs> I'm not eating it. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm general consensus. Uh, yes, 
Yes, we did. We, uh, Bill, we we officially grossed Maddie out live <laughs> for your entertainment, guys. Hey, we grossed out his dad too. So <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, guys. <laughs> you you never know what kind of questions you might get here on Tuesday night. Hey, now live. Oh my goodness. Does that work for platinum? <laughs> I, don't I don't see why it wouldn't. I don't see why it would probably work really well with silver too. What do you think, Wayne? Silver, platinum, you think it'd work with that? Yeah. I think it works really good with food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wayne says no guts, no glory. <laughs> first step. Oh, man. It's called eat, then go to the supermarket. Um, busted Knuckles prospecting our friend Sean, a new father from, I believe Busted Knuckles is from Northern Australia. Um, he says, yeah, mate, it definitely works. It tastes better the second time <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Top Cat. <sighs> Crazy. I mean, I don't know. this is this is what happens when you do a live show. You know, it can go anywhere. It usually does. It usually does. <laughs> so, tell us a little bit about you, Maddie. Okay. So, okay. um, I'm right now 12 years old. All of the way back when I started detecting, in the year of 2000 and something. <laughs> my dad he went out in the woods and I I decided to go with him and he's using the CTX 3030 I looked at it I took a swing with it and I got I didn't know what the signal was because I didn't understand it at first so I just put down the detector and said I ain't doing this so then my dad asked me if I wanted to get into detecting and I was like okay I'll, I'll try it out Bought me a detector, and ever since then, I've just been getting better and better. Well, that's 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 what happens when you practice. Practice, oh, practice makes you better and better. Yeah. And <laughs> so, how did how, how did you get all involved in the, doing your your show? What 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 made you decide to start doing videos and putting them? I shouldn't even ask that because he's a kid, and that's what kids do nowadays. Everything goes on Facebook, you know. So. <laughs> Well, my dad, he came up to me and said, do you want to start a, a lot? Do you want to start your own little um, Facebook group where you can post up your um, finds? People can look at it. I'm like, okay, sure. And it just kind of extended from there. Then finally one day my dad said, do you want to start a, a live show? I was like, that's pretty cool. I'll do it. So then every, it started off with every Monday I would do a live show, but then we decided to change it to every other Monday. Because every Monday is a bit too much for us. Yeah, last night, who'd you have on? I had on Redbeard, DJ Dowling. Yes. Yeah, that was a good show. Too bad Murphy was hitting you guys hard last night. And yeah. we know Murphy here all too well. <laughs> and, and I can definitely understand, I can definitely understand how uh, once a week can be a lot. You know, uh, yeah, sometimes, me too. Yeah, sometimes it's oh man, it's already Tuesday. We just did this, <laughs> you know. But yeah, but, but yeah, you got to meet you. Uh, once, once every two you weeks, like it. Hey, what was that? I I said you got to admit you enjoy it. You like yeah, it? I, oh, I do. So so you you have a lot of guests on your show, Maddie. Oh. Usually, sure. yeah. yeah. Tell them who you have next week. Um, we'll see yeah, plug next your show, time. Maddie. Plug your show, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next week, who is it again? I'm having again. Yeah, um, hold on. Yeah, CT, his name is CT Todd Yurt. Todd, I'm having CT Todd Yurt. And it's a special show. It's going to be Sunday the 26th instead of Monday. Yeah. It's going to be on, a, on Sunday the 26th. At 7 p.m. 7 p.m. 
Only because Todd couldn't do it on a Monday due to his schedule. Then you have Dwight Cologne coming up on September 10th. Um, September 10th, I have Dwight the Cologne coming up. Oh, cool. And then he, she had, we have a ten, we don't have a date yet, but we have Dev uh, Mikowski. Uh, I... Mikowski from my lab. We just have to get um, together with her and figure out a date. She, her, her schedule is so busy. We've had several mutual guests on our shows, uh, like Aqua Jigger and Jocelyn. Um, We've had Jocelyn. We never had Aqua Jigger. We tried and tried and tried. We never got any return messages from him. Oh, really? Yeah. I we had him on schedule for like two, four months in advance. And uh, he had to, I, I taught him, well, actually, it was like six months in the working to get a date nailed down to get him. You got to be persistent with those people you want on your show, Maddie. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to bug them. We had Rick oh. Savage on his show from uh, Savage Family Diggers. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, he would be. I bet he was fun to. He was uh, very fun. We had Andy Savage, Savage. I'm sorry, Andy Savage. We had Brandon Ray Nice on the show. Well, we did the Rick Savage show. I thought his house was just a bit dark. It turned out he was um driving and he had the <laughs> phone in the air. And, he's like, <laughs> and during the show, he's like, "Hold on, I gotta pull over." <laughs> So pulled over and we continue with the show. <laughs> While he was pulled over, so <laughs> like I said, I'm I'm sure he was a lot of fun. So where do you where do you see where do you see your your uh, your show going? I mean, what do you see it? See, um, what do you want? Where do you want your show to go? I mean, as far as what do you want to happen with it? Netflix. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Netflix. There you go. Netflix, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe like a little mini series TV show or something like that. Like maybe two seasons until people start hating it. <laughs> like, like, no, no. To me, to me, I think a uh, one of those reality shows like uh, Gold Rush and all those shows, uh, a, a Melly Techie show with 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 you and your dad and maybe somebody else. I think that would be kind of fun. That would be pretty cool. Father, son, detecting show. You have yeah, yeah. Father and son against father and, you know, it doesn't have to be father and son. It can be mother, daughter, father, daughter. Oh, look, you just made a game show, dude. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that Jeez, would be great. pretty interesting to have a show like that, you know? And they, they have challenges each week or something, you know? Right. Sweet. Yeah, that would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? We would win every week, of course. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but no, serious. I mean, you, is that something that you really would like to do? Is like maybe have a some kind of series, some kind of weekly on TV or Netflix or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Have you had anybody approach you? No. Uh, not yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess you just have to keep building your channel up. Yeah. Just keep building it up and you, you'll get noticed. We'll see. I mean, we both got sponsored by, we come, we're announced as the text, the text uh -huh. person from Mind Lab the last couple of weeks. And uh, we'll see where that brings us. Uh, yeah. Well, good luck with that. Oh, by the, uh, in case you were wondering, Maddie, yes, there is gold in uh, New Jersey. Huh. Huh. We haven't found any. <laughs> Other than rings and stuff, right? Right. And I'm not eating out of it, any of it. <laughs> I'm not eating any of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I can't say I blame you there, Maddie. I mean, have you actually gone out? Have you actually gone out painting, looking for gold, or just trying to find it with your metal detectors? Well, we did go to a um to this one convention out in California, gold panning, and. I actually got, what happened was, at the beginning, there was this big line. They gave everyone little gold containers. They right. Gave, 
They gave uh, us little um bottles that had a bit of gold in it. Right. Being as clumsy as I am, I dropped mine. And this little <laughs> kind woman came over and gave me hers. And she, oh, pulled cool. out, and she pulled out a knife and started picking out the gold out of the ground. Yeah, that was just the GP, uh, what was it? No, it was the, it was out in California. Yeah, it was in California. Mm -hmm. GPAA Gold Show? Yes, yeah. and, um, it was, I can't remember. It was in, like, Green something. What was the name of the town? Oh. It was they, in Oakland. Pleasanton. Pleasanton, California. Pleasanton. Go all the way out there just to, to attend that. You know, we're going to have a GPA Gold Show here in Ohio in October. Yeah, in Springfield, Ohio, October right. 21st and 22nd, I believe. I believe that's right. Without yeah. looking at my calendar, I don't know. Hmm. So, but we'll be out there. We'll be there in the painting, in the painting booth doing painting demos uh, and a few other things. Uh, and Wayne says, Wayne Peterson, the president of Watts, um, come to Colorado for gold prospecting. Nugget Brain will teach you how to get the gold. Uh, he had a really big hunt in Colorado uh, metal detecting event several couple of months back where... Um, Gypsy, um, zero discrimination. Um, you probably know who she is, even though she's a Garrett Swainer and not a Mind Lab Swainer. Hmm. Her channel is zero discrimination. Gypsy, um, she goes by Gypsy something or other. Wayne, help me out. I believe I've heard of the um, of zero discrimination. I think, but I don't know. She anything. swings a Garrett. Yeah. Zero discrimination. I have no idea. <laughs> we haven't had her on the show. So. I'm at a loss here. Yeah. Um. I don't know her. Well, you you should check out her channel. Maybe you could get her on your show, too. She seems like a really nice gal. She's going to be on our show in October. Um, see, in our show, we don't just stick to gold panning. We stick to, we do all things like outdoors and treasure hunting. Uh, and, Metal detecting, gold prospecting, arrowhead hunting, bottle digging, fossil uh, hunting, fossil hunting, rock hounding, you know, because it's all treasure and, you know, right. we all have that sense of adventure. Digging? Oh, yeah, can find I, a I, good I, dump, I'll be in it. Yeah, I, lo I look at, I look in bags on the side of the road. You never know. <laughs> You never know. Did you ever find any bottles from New Jersey out there? Uh, not yet. Uh, John Wolf said Ohio Gold Show October twenty seventh and twenty eighth. So thanks, John. That's thank you, John Cha. They um purple bottles, aren't those from New Jersey? Let's see what the ant is. The They're from different places. Oh, okay. Um. But I have found some local bottles, but nothing from really out of state yet. Okay. Uh, we find a lot of bottles sometimes when you're detecting. Sometimes you dig and there'll be a bottle in the hole. I find marbles when I'm digging. It's like everywhere I dig, I seem to find a marble. I used to. I haven't found a, a Marble in years. I used really? to play ones and I used to buy the, the hand blown ones. Right. And I haven't found a marble wow in a long time. Uh, musket balls instead now. I wouldn't mind finding a musket ball. I I think I I found a round 
like lead ball. You know that one I have sitting on a bottle on my shelf, Jesse? It's like an inch and a half in diameter. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it's a weapon projectile or just a big ball. But I liked it, so it's on my shelf. Uh, Jersey History Hunter says, we find Ohio bottles. <laughs> well, I haven't found no Jersey bottles yet. Jersey History Hunter, is he from Jersey? Don't throw those Buckeye <laughs> bottles away. Those Buckeye bottles can be worth some money. Buckeye beer bottles? Let's see. Here, here's a bottle from Jersey. Did you read it? No, I can't really read don't. it, but it I'll looks like it her. has some nice embossing on it. Yeah. Isn't that one of our family bottles? Hold on, let me see if I can get make it where you can see it. Uh, can you see nope. it? Yeah, I can see it's embossed. Uh, it's... I, I can make out the anchor. I just can't read the writing. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, I tried. It says Tomaney Brothers. Oh, no. <laughs> cool. cool. It was our hey. family. My my uh my grandfather's brother had a soda company. Oh, oh wow. cool, cool. Now, did you actually dig that, or did it no, show I up actually, in a basement somewhere? I was left one, and unfortunately, I needed more than one because I have three kids. So I had to buy. I bought two on eBay. <laughs> through the years they're really hard to find though every time i see when i buy one so well i can understand if i found something that said marvin's brewery or something i'd be buying it so uh, you snapped up that bucket we found it you found it the swank and marvin uh, no that, that was no that wasn't a swank that was down in loud mine and... right in Georgia, this guy was using a bucket that said Marvin's on it, right? And I go, right. hey, dude, how'd you get my bucket? <laughs> and he's like, what, what? And I go, it has my name on it. And after a while, he's like, you can have the bucket. And I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> that bucket really has my name on it. So <laughs> Nice. Well, let, let me take a quick commercial break, Marty and Maddie, and we'll attempt with the phone lines this week. What do you say, guys? Let's try it. Yeah. All we can do is watch who calls. That's right. All right, everybody. We'll be right back from this word from one of our sponsors. everybody we're back that was a commercial from our good friends at prospectors radio catch them every sunday night at 7 30 or west for west coast wednesday at nine o'clock eastern standard time uh the link is below in the description uh the co-host on on our with us tonight too yeah, we have the Wandering Buffaloes with us yep. tonight. Shad and Kathleen are in the house. Uh, Oops, I said Marty and Maddie. Sorry, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew and, and Maddie. Uh, <laughs> digging Adventures or 
Jeeves, I'm getting it all messed up. Digging with Maddie, a show can be seen every Monday, well, every other Monday night, and sometimes Sundays and whatnot. Check them out on Facebook, the link to their Facebook page and YouTube channels down below in the description. Can't miss we just, it. We just put up a YouTube video today. It's, um, turtle, it's called Turtles and Relics. Really good one. There you go. Turtles and Relics. Um, <laughs> Matty seems to find a lot of turtles when he's out in the old thing, so. The Turtle Whisperer. Is that what Maddie is? <laughs> yes. Is that like a cat whisper? Yeah. <laughs> I would tell them. To, I would tell them to get me all the fines. Yeah. Well, if you have a turtle that brings you gold, <laughs> we'll take them home with us. I would have to get me. I'd have two turtles. One to get me all the fines, and one to distract the other kid. The other kid. There you uh, go. Oh. <laughs> You guys follow the turtle. I'll, I'll look. I'll swing here. <laughs> All right. Phone lines are open, our friends. Phone line brought to you by our friends at Carolina Prospectors. So feel free to call in. Ask Matthew and Maddie some questions of your own. So, Maddie, did you start back to school yet? Um, I... I go back to school in September. I'm ah. September seventh when I'm ah, sick. Cool. Yeah, kids here start tomorrow. And oh, some, here they already started today. And I know that some of the kids in Van Wert started yesterday. Wow. My school, we had a ton of snow days, and there's. One day, where all the other schools in the uh, in the district, their the power in the schools were still on, or they turned on, but me and but our school and another one it didn't turn on, so they all got out on the 25th and we got out on the 26th of June. Well, be, be glad you're not out in California because they have school year round. Oh, um, really? Yeah. yeah, but you pick when you can want to take your time off. Yeah, but I hear actually you, with year-round schooling, you retain more, and you actually end up getting more time off. Okay. <laughs> um, if, if you add everything together, the dates and holidays you get off, you actually get more off. Um, so you can it, take all that time off at once. Hmm. I don't know how they do it. I don't live in California no more. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, last I heard is you got you you got to pretty much pick when you were going to take your time off. So, it, for whatever reason, but out in California, they also just hand out diplomas to anybody and everybody. So, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> One kid that always goes to school, and then go, and then I'll wait for the exact time that it's like I I don't I, I go to school every day, but in my last year, I'll look at how much time I have to spend off, and I'll basically do it so all the time at the end of the year is basically all just gone. Well, let me, I, I stand corrected, I guess. Yeah, uh, Californians in the chat room are speaking right. up. Yeah, he said that Northern California does not have school year-round. My kids just started the other day. Uh, then David Villa must, says in Cali three, three weeks ago. Three weeks yeah, ago. it must depend on where, what part of California, where you're at. All I know is it's not like that where I'm from, so I'm okay. <laughs> as long as it's not where you're at, right? Yeah, I'm out of school, so I don't really care. <laughs> so, do you have any? Uh, what are your life plans, Maddie? I mean, I, you don't you, you don't really plan on making a career out of metal detecting, do you? Although it can be done. I could. 
Yeah. Oh, he's already sponsored get... by Mind Lab, and he's only twelve. That's true. <laughs> if I got the chance, I could. But okay. I have. So right now, I have. I want to grow up. Go into the um. Go into the union with like like my dad and become a become what are you right now? Um, steam fitter. A steam fitter. Because apparently that pays good. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, yeah. And if I, uh, here, and, any skilled trade is going to pay good. I yeah. mean, you know, electricians, plumbers, steam fitters, dye makers. Yeah. Uh, those are the kind of jobs that are that are that are always going to be needed, and they always make good money. Yeah. yeah. And if I fail out of that, then I'm just going to be a homeless man in the streets. Okay. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> if I fell out of the union, then <laughs> then what I might do is I will be, try to become a math teacher because <laughs> I love math. Cool. So um, I guess you're open for pretty much anything, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just, at 12 years old, you got lots of different things you probably want to do. <laughs> if it pays, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> There you You're go. In the right direction, you know. <laughs> you got to make the money. They have fun, unfortunately, or yeah. or live in the backwoods and make your own fun that way. Yeah, Will the Texas? I want a career in metal detecting. Do what you love to do. You got it. Yeah, metal detecting paid as much as work. I would be doing it all the time. The same with gold prospecting. I hear you about you. I hear yeah. you. Well, you know, uh, well, that's that was something I I really got uh, a taste of when we were in Vermont. That that uh, there are people who are trying to make a living out of prospect out, out of prospecting by going out and and really working and trying to make that living. Um, uh, you you get what you put into it, right? That's what you get back. You put enough effort into it, I'm sure you could make a living at it. Yeah. Um, I'm retired, so I don't make a living at anything anymore. <laughs> that's and that's your goal, Maddie, to get retired and not have to do anything anymore. Retire at 18, you're good. <laughs> you're good. You're 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 you're, you you're killing a, it. You get a one dollar pension. <laughs> One dollar pension. <laughs> that 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 won't go too far. No, I told oh. them when I hit the lottery, it's gonna be I'm, I'm gonna win a million dollar lottery, and a million people are gonna hit the same day, and I'm gonna get a dollar, and it's gonna be over twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> That's. <laughs> uh, five cents a year. <laughs> Oh, I like I like Jersey history hunters thing. Uh, I want to be an archaeologist when I grow up. That'd be cool. Oh, I want to be. That's what I was forgetting. I want to be an. Uh, I want to be um. What's it called? Astro, astrologist. The guy that studies space. Oh, astronomer. Yeah, an astronomer. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know if there's a lot of money in that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess you can go oh. to the store and buy a telescope, right? Look out the side. Does oh. that pay any money? Well, it takes me. <laughs> oh. Charge, charge, our, charge. our friend Brian. Brian. If you if you start finding new stars, then it might. I don't know how that works, buddy. I, I imagine something like that. You would have to be able to get yourself lots of grants and give you lots of money to. Whatever it is you want to do. Yeah. But I think your union idea is really a good one. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I, think a, I think a good skilled trade is going to take you a lot farther than most anything else. You know, I know, um, well, what's his name? The guy from England, Drayton. Uh, what's his first name? Gary Drayton? Yeah. See now he's on he's on a lot of shows and stuff, so that's probably he gets paid that way. 
know, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't mind being on a few shows. Oh, yeah, me too. But you I'm already know out. that they might hit you up. No, no. I'm good on the radio. <laughs> no, I'm not talking to you. Oh, you're Tennessee talking to them. Or yeah. Matthew, they might hit you up. You might get an email or a message someday saying, Hi, I'm so and so from Yakety Schmackety Productions, and we're going to start a metal detecting show. And are you interested? Let's do a screen test. And it's like, I mean, do I get to pick my own cast? Of attack this because I have a whole crew I could pick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, pick right. you. I'll be picking this person. This person. Have you Thanks. ever gone out detecting with Jason Quarter Hoarder? He's the Jersey boy, ain't he? No, no. I've never heard of him. No, no. I mean, we've been detecting with Drew Aholic before. I don't know if you know him. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's Jocelyn's boyfriend. <laughs> well, I know him before they were together. So yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he, they came to our uh, GPAA Buckeye Chapters Fossick uh, just after Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we got to spend some time with Jocelyn and Drew. Both really neat people. I had a good time with them. Yeah, they're part of our, um, we belong to the Mid-Jersey uh, Research and Recovery um, group and, they, and club. And they're part of that, too. Part of our, They both go to our, 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 the same club we do. Drew's actually the vice president of it. All right, cool. He didn't tell us, he didn't tell us that. No. He <laughs> Get that a secret. Yeah. He also took us fossil fossil digging once. And both me and Drew, I just I found a rock and I was like, this is pretty cool. I'll put it in the I'll put it in our yard. So I put it on the log. He walks over to see what I put there and he sees the rock. He starts freaking out. He says, We just put this here, right? I'm like, Yeah. This is a this is a fossilized lobster. Like, oh, the one you showed us earlier. Yeah, yeah why don't you show everybody? I think they could see it through that piece of glass. Uh, yeah, the glare uh, from your no. screen. Can you open? There it? you go. Yeah, we can yeah. open that. We can. Yeah, I got it. I, got I can it. break the glass. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I should talk to Drew Jesse and just get Drew on because he owns a coin shop and. He's into looking for artifacts and rocks. Right. That's cool. A rock so, lobster. Ooh. <laughs> rock lobster. A real Actually, cool. uh, I'd like to get Mike or uh, Rick Smith on. So I feel so about ten minutes after he um was uh, ten minutes after he um was geeking out about it, he he even called his dad. He was calling everyone then 10 minutes later he pulls one he starts freaking out again he calls his dad again <laughs> <laughs> and my dad and my dad ended up um um lobsterless hey <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, just to have you had a good time that's all <laughs> bob dip asked if you guys have ever hooked up with the stealth diggers never heard of it <laughs> Never heard of it. Boy, right. buddy, you need to check your community out on YouTube more. It's okay. huge. Who's I part of the stealth? The, I mean, I know I'm a part of the group, but I just don't know. I don't know exactly who they are. I mean, is that like Joe? Um, Charlie and help me out, Jesse. I can't. I'm I'm old and I have all all timers. <laughs> sure, it ain't part timers. No, it's all timers. <laughs> <laughs> I I forget a lot of the stout diggers' name, um, but uh, what we'd like to get hooked up is that we go to Jackson with the Hoover Boys. 
Oh, that the Hoover me. boys? Um, Mark oh. Hoover's one of them, right? Uh. No, no I, that's right. They got their name from Hoover vacuum cleaners. Someone said uh -huh. something about getting relics like a Hoover vacuum or something. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time, this happened during the, um, this happened during the summer, I was, um, I don't remember, wait, it was not during the summer, I, the, um, uh, back, the back, it was the backyard boys. Yeah, that's oh, oh, the backwoods boys? Yeah, We've the had them out here. Yeah, Sean and Jacob Yoder. Yoder, yeah. Yep. The Lemons for Leukemia Challenge, and one of them, they um, challenged me, so I did it. Uh, I, Keebler. Keebler is one of the stout diggers. I believe he plays music, too. He, on his uh, channel, he does a lot of music. Okay, I think I've seen that live on uh, Stealth Diggers. He posts some live stuff on, on uh, Stealth. Uh, I think so. Now, Wayne Peterson, he goes, Have you guys ever heard of Watts? Worldwide Association Treasure Hunters. No. Might as well call in, Wayne. No one's called in yet. You might as well call I in. Just, I was going to ask you, if did you open the lines up? Yeah. Okay. The lines yeah. are open. Nobody wants to talk to us. Oh. He's rolling the dice. I, I thought I'd take a chance. When Quarter Hoarder was on, Jason, uh, we had some undesirables called in. Kind of spoiled the night. But, you know, how it is with... They're up in New Hampshire. Okay. That must be why they have live free or die on their stealth digger stuff. Uh, Charlie, I think. Beardo, Keebler, Beardo, they're all naming Beardo. off the stealth, stealth diggers. Okay, I'm thinking <laughs> of the other guy, um, Redbeard. <laughs> <laughs> The nickname Weirdo with the Beardo. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that from last night, Maddie. Here's Wayne Peterson now. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, Wayne, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Wayne. I'm doing real good. I got one question. What part of the world do these people live in? South America? No. I haven't heard of anybody we've been talking about all night. <laughs> they're they're from New Jersey. Well, that's you know on the East Coast. Yeah, that it is. Jersey, they never heard of Gypsy or 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 Watt or you know they ever heard of GPAA. Uh, they went to a GPA gold show in California and found some gold. So they have heard of the GPA. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just, you know, they must live in the dark ages or in the country where they no. have no communication. I, I think they're busy in their mind lab swingers. I, I just think Matt and Maddie are, Matthew and Maddie are busy with their show. So, and their treasure hunting. If the uh, people swing uh, other yeah. detectors other than mind lab, we really haven't been detecting with them. Like the people who swing Garrett's, like that person, Gypsy person you're talking about. There's a, she obviously swings a Garrett, so I really wouldn't have paid attention anyway. Well, she swings all kinds of detectors. She doesn't just swing Garrett. She does a lot of Garrett metal detectors. Okay. I, I checked out her page, and she has the uh, AT Pro in every picture. <laughs> right. Well, she's got the Max. I've seen her use a uh, Mind Lab before. I mean, she's used all of them. Oh. But you never even heard of Watts Worldwide Association of Treasure Seekers? Nope. 
Where are they at? You, you need to go. Well, the main office is in Durango, Colorado, but we're worldwide. No. We have over 240,000 members in our organization. Okay. Is that a, a, for gold or is that for metal detecting? What is that? Treasure. Treasure. Treasures. Okay. Yeah, I've never heard of it. That's it's the first I've ever heard of it. There's a lot of different things that we've never There's heard. so many different groups out there. I mean, you can't join them all. You know? Oh, ain't that the truth, Matthew? I mean, right ain't now that I belong the to 130 some odd groups on Facebook, and that's not one of them. Now it can be. What's that? Now it can be. We do two big metal detecting hunts every year one in Antlers, Oklahoma. And one here in Cortez, or Mancus, Colorado, just outside of Durango. And give away hundreds and thousands of dollars in the prizes every year. Okay, we do silver hunts, we do treasure hunts. Do you do anything on the East Coast, near Jersey? Not you yet. Well, Colorado not. and places out west, but do you do anything on the East Coast? We're looking for locations. If you know a good location... No, no. What we need but is a uh, camp. I never heard of you, but you don't do anything on the East Coast so far, so that's my aunt. That's why I haven't heard of you. Well, we do, you know, we we don't know, we don't have a location on the East Coast that fits our what we need. We need a place that has uh, camp on facilities, uh, plenty of area to do metal detecting in. And, you know, we need the camping, and if they could supply food or do, you know, cook food or whatever, we need that because we do activities from 8 o'clock in the morning till after dark. We have uh, night hunts and everything else that we do, and it's an all-day event. The one here in Colorado, we did six metal detecting hunts in three days this year, and you know, sometimes we'll do an all-day hunt. Sometimes we'll do two or three hunts in a day, depending. Plus, we also have open areas where people could go and metal the tent and find all kinds of stuff. But we just need to find something on the East Coast, which is kind of difficult because there's not any facilities out there that we could utilize. We've looked into about 20 or 30 of them. They just don't fit what we need for our our uh, members to go to and enjoy. What about the Swank West property in Ohio? <laughs> well, that's not really far enough east. Mm, it true. Possibly, I don't know. We would love to do something like in northern Florida or South Dakota or uh, South Carolina, something like that, way on the way, on the east coast. But it's just trying to find a property that could you know, facilitate what we need and be affordable because, you know, we've looked at several places. They want $10,000 to run it out for a weekend. Well, that's not going to happen. Well, I, I so. can't see you, you're, um, you don't have any places on the East Coast, but you act shocked like I never heard of you, that I never heard of you. <laughs> but that's because you haven't done anything on the East Coast. Right. <laughs> so well, we have several members that live on the East Coast. Okay. And I think it was three years ago or four years ago, my lab did a big uh, hunt out on the beach, and we had representation out there. We had one of our East Coast people be up there. I think it was up in New Jersey where they did it on the beach. We had a booth up there and everything. So, you know, we, we just can't be everywhere. I live I live in Colorado. Okay. And I'm uh, my, my whole point is you you were totally shocked that I never heard of you. And then I said, because you're not on the East Coast, but now you come back with stuff, the reasons you're not on the East Coast, I understand that. I'm just explaining to you why we've never heard of you. Right. That makes sense? <laughs> that makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, we, we do what we can and what, what we got to work with. Okay. You'll get there someday, Wayne. But Wayne oh, is the Wayne's the president of Worldwide Treasure Hunters. Um, 
treasure seekers. Worldwide Association of Treasure Seekers. Watch. Uh, right. And so. our founder is from, uh, well, our founder, I believe, is from South Carolina. The man that founded Watts in 2003. So, I, we just can't be everywhere. We're trying to. I mean, we, we're on the internet. We have uh, Facebook pages. We have a regular website and everything else. It just, you know, we're kind of limited and travel where we can go and everything. So, but check us out. It's worth checking out. Okay, we will do that. All right. Well, nice talking with you. Amen. Thank you, Wayne. No, okay, bye. Have a good night. Yep. At least we know who they are now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't uh, know every. I, 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 maybe I lost a little bit, but I, I can't know every group in the whole world. You know. Oh, I, I definitely understand with you there, Matthew. We have a huge community in the treasure hunting field, and that's, and one of those huge fields is metal detecting um, our friend Ray Russa uh, a gold prospector from Juneau Alaska is on the line hello Ray hi Ed good evening hey, Ray. how are you doing good, hey, good. hey what's up buddy I had a few questions for the young man Maddie. how you doing young man good yourself all right. Um, I, I haven't done metal detecting yet. Um, for one, I just haven't uh, paid paid to get a metal detector. But uh, one of the questions that always seems to come up in most of the forums is, how long did it take you to get used to hearing targets versus what a ground bounce would be, the different tones? Um, wait, what? Do you mean like how long did it take for me to like understand what different signals meant? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what he's asking. Because aren't you supposed to take the metal detector and kind of bounce it against the ground first to kind of get a general feel what the noise is? Uh, um, well, the, the um, detectors that we use, they have auto ground balance, so we don't have to worry about that. That's oh, that okay. Is. So, have you okay. used some of the older styles, or have you only used the one style? Um, we use we try to stick to like one style of detector, if that that we feel good with. But if another detector comes out that we're interested in, like this was with us with the CTX thirty thirty, we liked it, and we stuck and we stuck with it. But when they came out with the with the Knox, we thought it was interesting, so we. So we tried it out and we liked it. So this is what about your second year doing this or your third? Um, my seventh. Seventh year. Wow, good for you. So, what did all your uh, friends at school think about this? Or do you got a few buddies at school that d enjoy it with you? They don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> there is, I do have one friend at school who I tell him that about different coins that I find, and he he. He collects coins apparently, and he's, and I'll talk to him about the different coins that I find, and he he's really intrigued by it. Uh, the other day, one of our good uh, members here on Ed in the Shed and uh, Gold Prospector Space, he was out uh, prospecting a new piece of property, and found some really neat old toy cars. Uh, have you found some pretty neat toy cars as well? Um. I have found toy cars before, but when, that's only when I was, like, out detecting on a beach. Like, it would be, like, as if there was a kid playing with um, their Hot Wheels cars or something, and it just got lost in the sand. Okay. Hey, Ray, you should see the old lead toys that Matthew, Maddie's dad, has found. Check those out. Oh, those are neat. Yeah. There's a lead whistle in there. Don't know who was thinking, oh, I'm going to use a lead whistle. <laughs> well, back in the day, we didn't really know that lead was, you know, you don't want to put it in your mouth. 
Yeah. We were still biting sinkers all the time just to go fishing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hell, we used to we used to weld uh, food cans with with lead. Wow. You're that old, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, now, have you actually gone out and tried to do any Boy Scout or Cub Scout outings to try to explain what metal detecting is with uh, other young men your age? Um, no. I have no? never... Uh, do your show to try and explain it. The, um, I do my show to try and explain that, basically. Okay. Your YouTube, you're talking about your YouTube show. Well, um, yeah. And I, Their um, show's I, live on Facebook, yeah. Sorry, uh, Maddie. I have gotten a lot of kids into metal detecting. Well, neat. He, he has gotten a lot of kids into metal detecting through his show. I mean, we get people message him every week saying, my son loves your show. He got into metal detecting because I watched your show and he watched it. Or my daughter. Or so, somebody like that. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So do you, have a, do you have a lot of kids that, that uh, watch your show? Is that is your? You have a large audience of that. I know. Well, he may have like ten, fifteen kids that just watch his show. A lot of them are with their, and then you have a lot that watch it with their parents. Yeah. Ah, okay. There's, cool. There's these two kids. They're they're really nice kids. I actually sent them to some hats for free that they that they wear. Their names are they're Evan and Bryce. They actually also sent us their. Their little sticker up here. Nice. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> they sent us one of their stickers. And they oh, back. cool. It's Lucky Evan and Digger Bryce. I might have to send you a flash in your pan sticker, Maddie. <laughs> that look good right there. Wait a minute, how big is the sticker? <laughs> oh, about so big. <laughs> <laughs> It's it about you, big. Take that old sheet, so you have to move those other stickers. No, out. it ain't that big. <laughs> we'll trim it down. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, how how's your grades in school? What what grade are you getting into this year? I'm going into seventh right now, and I'm an honor student. Very cool. good, very good. Well, keep up the good work, young man. I just kind of wanted to call in and see what some of your friends in your school might. Uh, in your neighborhood, might thought of uh, metal detecting and how they did, but uh, you answered that with a good smile. Uh, they don't care. <laughs> 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 well, guys, you're doing good, and I uh, love all your confidence. Keep it up, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks for calling in, Ray. Take it easy, Ray. That was. Ray Russo, our good friend from Juneau, Alaska. He's he's a mining he's a mining shriner. <laughs> yeah, shriner miner. Sometimes I go to school and say, "I found this while I was metal tech." Then go, "Good for you." <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, you're you're kind of a rare breed. I mean, you're you seem pretty. Um, uh, uh, you seem like a real go-getter. You, you get into something, you want to do it, you do it. You don't care what anybody else thinks about what you're doing. You're doing what you love to do. And that's really cool. It, and that's fine that other kids don't care. But yes. you might think about actually doing a demonstration as opposed to just doing the show, which is cool. The show is good. But if you could, if you could set up some kind of a demonstration, a uh, to show a, a class, or you know, not, maybe not even your class, but maybe uh, 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 one of your science classes, uh, or history class. History class might be better. We talk yeah. about history. Yeah. I took, a, I took a picture of my fossilized lobster, and I brought it to school for a picture, and I showed it to my science teacher, and apparently, she um. She had a um, group with some of the other science teachers called Rock Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> and she even showed showed the little folder thing and it said Rock Lobster on it. You know, a lot of times it's it's like with with uh, with us painting for gold. 
you really don't. I mean, I can, we can tell you all about it, and, and it's kind of cool, but you don't get excited until you actually do it yourself. So, you know, if you could get some uh, one of your classes or classmates to go out and, and metal attack with you, or like I said, do a demo for the class, I think that will that will that will uh, encourage other kids to you know do something like that. Get them outside. Get them away from it. Uh, Golden Pay Dirt Reviews uh, asked in the room, uh, do you use tones or numbers more for your targets? Tones or numbers? Um, Is that a question for you or me? Or both? Um, I guess both. Um, oh, what do you, what do you, I, what use I use the um, I use the numbers more. And I use tones. Because <laughs> if I go over the signal... I, well, if sometimes I won't be looking at the screen and it's the tone that gets my attention, but most of the time I'm looking at the screen and if it's, the um, number doesn't pop up and it's like a little tiny tone, I'm like, eh. And I use the tones because when I'm water detecting, you can't see the VDI anyway when it's under the water. Mostly always using tones. All right, there you go. Uh, my my detector doesn't have numbers on it. It just has. I go by tones and a a, a digital thing that says like tin foil and uh, like you know, I won the mine lab. Go find forty which my grandson uses most of the time. He's seven, I think. Does he um, find anything with it? Yeah, he found a quarter spill under our clothesline in our backyard. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, but other than that, I have a couple of Garrett's. I thought about investing in the Equinox 800 since it's waterproof and mine labs a top-notch detector from down under yeah you say now he's gonna get the um he's investing in the um equinox 800 equinox 800 is a great machine <laughs> yeah That's what i use thank you from us the testers yeah i, I swing a garrett 350. That's. That's my uh, that's my one of three machines that I have. I have an old white uh, coin master, uh -huh. and uh, of course uh, the uh, the Radio Shack little thing. <laughs> we gotta get Whatever. you to my lab. What was that? Gotta get a my lab in your hand. <laughs> I, I you know I I've done. I've done a little metal detecting mostly in my yard and around the area and I found a few things and it's cool. But it, it just it's it's not one of those things that trips your trigger. It didn't trip mine anyways. You know. Not yet. Not yet. I haven't found that gold ring or anything really cool yet. I mean I liked it when I found my first silver ever. A lot of times I was just uh, a bottle cap finder and a pull tab finder and uh, that's kind of like uh, I'm trying to compare it to gold prospecting a skunk day and when you dig and dig all day and you think you should be on it but you're barely missing it which I don't get many of those but it does happen um, yeah I found a, 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 a silver dime and a, a Kennedy half and Little pieces of broken jewelry and lots and lots of whooping nails. <laughs> now I, I know in, this, in my yard. <laughs> Jesse, since we've been having more detectorists on, you know, Matthew and Maddie, and Jocelyn and Drew and uh, Quarter Hoarder who's in the chat room right now and so many others, it's been wanting me to get my detector out more. And 
I've actually picked up a couple new permissions, old farmhouses that I we need to hit sometime. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, right now, my uh, everything that I'm doing right now is going towards you know gold rush phase. Well, yeah, that's our main concentration, and right. that be over after Labor Day weekend. Right. Then I gotta then I gotta go to a flea market the following weekend, and set up for the weekend uh, to uh, sell a bunch of stuff for our family reunion next year. <laughs> that's gonna be fun. I might do a video on that. I, I've been trying to talk you into doing videos of auctions and stuff. You could be like the crazy lamp dude or something. <laughs> Even though that name's almost taken. It's granted yeah. Jocelyn's channel is crazy lamp lady. But, man, I, I think a lot of people about, would like that about aspect. the goofy auction dude? <laughs> the goofy auction dude? I like it. I can see it now. Goofy auction dude. <laughs> he'll bet he'll bid on anything the <laughs> phone lines are still open people come on give a call, call in. Talk ask, to our ask, ask, ask questions i remember my, i went out with my um with my mom to go to an auction and they open up the one thing it's just box after box and there's papers falling out of everywhere you can't see anything inside of it because it's just piled in with boxes. And everyone's jaws just opened up from how disgusting it looked. And the guy goes, 100, anyone want it for 100? And it went all the way down to a dollar. And someone <laughs> finally bought it. <laughs> and there's there's got to be a dollar's worth of paper in there at least. <laughs> when you do auctions, you got to look at all that and go, what is it worth and what am I willing to pay for it? You know? And if you have no idea, do not bid. <laughs> you know? But it's, it's fun. Did you have fun at the auction? Is it uh, crazy? I had fun. The, the, thing that I, the thing that amazes me after you go to a, quite a few auctions, the thing that always amazes me is I can look at something and, and I can even look it up. And look at it and go, well, that's only worth, you know, on eBay, it's only worth 20 bucks, right? So you're sitting at the auction and that particular item that you're looking at comes up. And right off the bat, somebody goes, $20. Then it's 25 Then it's 35 Now it's 40 It was only 35 when it was brand new, you know, but you still got people because they want it. And, and you get in that, oh, Feeding frenzy, you know, where where you start a bidding war, and you're bidding knowing you don't even want it, but you just don't want that other person to get it for that cheaper price, or you're gonna make them pay more. It's 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 rough. <laughs> I've I've been lucky. I haven't come home with too many things that weren't worth what I paid for them. So, but maybe. Oh, uh, here I'm gonna get on a question that's been kind of brought up already um, by Ray, but quarter hoarder Jason goes, now that Maddie is famous, do classmates buy his lunch? <laughs> uh, Jersey history hunter said, he said they don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll walk in school and go, I'm, the, I'm famous in the detecting hobby and go, does that what's that have to do with me? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. I'm telling you. <laughs> you got you got nobody in your school that watches you or knows who you are as far as belly texting, other than what you tell them? Um, there's only one kid in the school that really paid pays much attention. So that's only because he's a coin collector. Uh, right, you talked he about was him. Fine coins. Now, here's a question we usually get in somewhere or another. Has anyone ever came up to you on the beach or while you're detecting and say, I know you, you're Maddie, I watch your show? Yeah, yeah we were in the, yeah. tell them about when we were in the water and 
in a oh. whole totally another state. Um, <laughs> wait. Oh yeah. I remember this guy walks up to us. He's yelling. Wait. Hey. Yeah. He uh, we're just detecting and he looks over and he goes like he he puts his hand to see up to see where we are and he goes, Manny We're in the water, mind you, and he's on the beach, this guy, and he's yeah and he looks like this. And he looks, and he sees Maddie, and he goes, he's like, Maddie! <laughs> there was also another guy one time. We were, well, I was on the beach detecting. He walks up to us, and he goes, you're the kid from the internet, right? I'm like, yeah. yeah. When we went to an event not too long ago, and as we're getting out of the car, people are yelling, Maddie, and they go, hi, Maddie's dad. <laughs> 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 Hi, Maddie. So now, now you know your place, right? I know. I'm Maddie's dad now. Right. <laughs> let, okay, let, me, let me get a quick commercial in real quick again. Uh, take care of some of those obligations. And then um, maybe I'll give away a Digging with Maddie hat that was given to me by Matthew and Maddie for a giveaway. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back after this announcement. Adventure. Adventure. Mystery. Discovery. Gold panning is more surf for beautiful rocks. Panning is a journey that can take you to amazing new places all around the world. It is an experience for all ages, bringing families closer together and fulfilling a spark of excitement when life has grown too dull. The Gold Claw Pan makes it easier to take up on the journey than ever before. This expert design pan is made for any skill level and any age. All you need is an explorer's heart and the passion for discovery. Begin your family's gold story now. Order your Gold Claw Pan today and see where the adventure takes you. All right, everybody, we're back with Matthew and Maddie, Maddie of Digging with Maddie on Facebook. The, dis uh, the link to his groups in the description below in their YouTube channel. Uh, let me see, Luke Duke. I was going to ask that question, but go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Jesse. Yeah, other than other than you know having some strange weirdo come go, run up to you, hey, I know you, I know you. Have you ever had any scary moments while detecting? Like running to bears or um I personally I besides being scared by a turtle in a bush, I've never been scared. <laughs> scared you got scared yeah. by a grub worm the other day. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was in the hole. And in the video I got scared by a grub that was in the hole. <laughs> Why don't you tell them about that snake? No. <laughs> they don't want to hear the snake story. Oh, uh, sure we do. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I was water detected in the bay, like I like to do. And I had waders on, as it was called. And it was uh, probably like early fall. Well, probably October. And I get out of the water, and I use the bathroom out in the weeds. And all of a sudden, something comes out right by my face and strikes in my face and then recoils and missed my face by that much and it recoiled back up into the tree. And it was a rat snake and it was that fat. Like, yeah. Oh. Wow. That would have been pretty scary. And it was. I mean, I don't know why he struck at me. I was at least a couple feet away from him and I, it wasn't a threat. I was just in there to use the bathroom. <laughs> I'm using your house in my bathroom. But, and then, of course, you know, I don't know if you guys ever watched Home Alone when they threw the little tarantula on the guy and he screamed. Well, that's how I, you guys, the kind of screaming I made. And my, <laughs> <laughs> and my friend Rodney reminds me of that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> It's something you won't live down, huh? I, then I remember one time, it was me, my dad, and one of his friends. We were out in the woods. And for a second, 
and we hear him go, you know, ah, start running. Like, what happened? Goes, there's a snake in the hole. We walk over, and there's a worm snake. <laughs> it, took, it was still a snake, all right? I don't like snakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, that hole. But it was a worm snake. I never heard of a worm snake before, but when you dig a hole and there's a big snake, it well, it wasn't big, but there's a snake in there. It's kind of uh, and, alarming. And I think one time before you got scared by it, I'm not sure. No. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> so, with, with with all your metal detecting and all the different places you've gone to, have you found anything that you haven't been able to figure out what it is? <laughs> well, we usually put things on, there's a page called ID Me, so when you can't right. figure out what it is, right. somebody so, always seems to know what it is. I mean, look at that. Maddie found a lot. That's solid uh, all copper. And, oh, copper? Yeah. We couldn't figure out what it was. And we put a post on ID me, and within an hour, somebody responded. What was it for? An, there's it's a like, collar for an oxen. Oh, wow. Part of the collar for an oxen. There's actually wood and stuff that went around, in through there, and it went around the neck of the oxen. Huh. That's Very cool. Here. Yeah. Pretty heavy piece. I mean, but. We've been, uh, a couple things we haven't been on ID. But mo uh, not most, most of the stuff we've been on ID. Every, every, everything you found so far has been ID'd by either you or somebody, huh? Yeah, but sometimes we get IDs a little late. Um, back in, uh, what year was it? 93, I found a button. Yeah, it's just a button, and it said Monroe on the back. And... I tried to find out what it was, and I wound up selling it for a hundred bucks. And then I found out it was a uh, political campaign button from 1820 that says uh, James Monroe on it. Ah. It was a uh, that was a mistake on my part for not knowing what something was before you get rid of it. Yeah, that sounds like. It, I mean, if somebody offers you a hundred dollars for something you don't know what it is, it's really tempting to go ahead and take it. But at the same time, you got to think, well, wait a minute. Why is this guy offering me $100 for this piece of junk? Maybe I should hang on just a little bit longer and figure out what it is. Right. And it was the weirdest part is it was like I sold it. And then the following week, I got a, a letter in the mail from my friend with all the information. You know, back then, there was there was no Internet. It was hard to research, though. Right. And I sent him a picture of it. And then he sent me photocopies from a book and show me what it was and what the value was back then. Yeah. How about, have you, uh, have you found stuff that you, uh, like either is either museum quality or something that you donate to a museum for, you know, because it was so cool. No, I haven't found anything. No. Like and you haven't sold anything, right? Oh, well, yeah, you just sold that. Oh, I sold scrap gold and the cash in my change and other than that the artifacts not really just yeah i mean stuff like that i, I just right. got to keep it and look at it and, but so what, was that a, was that a tooth in that box yeah. Yeah, what kind of, the side what shield no oh, no what is that in the top left corner yeah yes, right here the saddle shield Oh, saddle oh, shield? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. What's a saddle shield? I don't know. That's it's it's, it's the, the it's, let me see that again. Let me see that again. So like, it's a saddle. Is it like the, it's probably like the end of the strap for strapping the saddle on? Like a end of the leather piece? Is that what it is? They use that piece to protect themselves from bullets. No. <laughs> they use that little tiny piece. I'm not too up with horses and stuff, but um, I, mean, I put it on ID me, and somebody came back and said it was a saddle. So there's another thing. See, when you don't know what something is, I just right. put it on ID me, and somebody comes back with it. What it is. Not yeah, cool. 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 All right. Well, it's, it's cool that there's, there's uh, sites out there where you can do that. I know I, I belong to a couple mineral ID uh, Facebook pages, 
you know, identifying minerals and rocks and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's always good to figure out what it is you had before you get rid of it. Yes, definitely. Can you and Maddie see the chat room, Matthew? Um, yeah, a second ago. I, hold on. I was just going to look something up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just there. <laughs> hold on. There we go. Okay. Hold on. Flash in the pan. Give me a second. No worries. We're lost in the internet. <laughs> it's like lost in space, huh? There we go. Okay. Right. Now, uh, pick a number from 1 to 100. Mm -hmm. And. Whoever guesses the number you pick. Can on, write this down. Yeah, I, I have a good memory. No, why don't we write it down so the people don't think we're changing it. <laughs> I, don't want you to win. I don't want you to win. I don't want you to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> change that one. Change one to a hundred. Let's do that. Write, write it down. Give them five minutes, Ed. Yeah. So one to a hundred. Uh -huh. Let me know when you're ready. Come on, Harry, pick a number. Why can't you write it bigger so they can see it? Oh, Ronald, you have to you have to guess the number. I think I'm here, Ronald. Uh, <laughs> whisper, whisper it. <laughs> Oh, she, he said her sticking his fingers up. <laughs> we can't All let right, him know, go. man. There we go. There we go. There He's you writing go. it down. <laughs> All right, here, I'll get my... Okay, he got it. I'll get my stopwatch, and we'll go for how long? Five minutes. They've already Five. started. Five they minutes. Know. Yep, they've already started. Wow. We only got 28 people in here. I know. One, one guess per person. Is that what we're doing? One guess per person. Okay. Okay, well, we have 6935, 60, or 76, 79. 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 57, 26, 7, 62, 26, 7, 62, I'm watching, 44, 14, it's, I uh, John Deere, you got to pick another one, 14, quarter order, got 14 first, uh, hey, Ron, how you doing, buddy, 97 for Ron, I picked a weird number, uh, that's good, you, you, you're in the right crowd, but it's still in the boundaries of one to a hundred. Man, that hat looks so much nicer on this show than it did wow. when I wear it. Yeah. Seven, Patrick Moore. What'd you do to that hat to make it look so good? Well, it's the way it came out of the box when your dad sent it to me, buddy. <laughs> All righty. We have seven, Ron for the Hills, 97. Ron for the Hills. Sorry, I had to throw that in. I do it every time he's on. 88, 28, 38, close but no cigar, 38. I'm not going to say who it was that was close. Definitely somebody. <laughs> a weird number. Hmm. Thirty-seven point forty-five. <gasps> what a word. Thirty-seven point forty-five. They didn't get it. <laughs> Thirty-two. Wait, wait, one number. Numbers. <laughs> Don't worry. It's not a percent. It's one whole number. Uh, let's give a multiple try since we only have so many in here. 
Well, I don't know what the numbers been picked so far. You haven't seen them yet, right? This Have could you? be the no, wait, our number, Maddie's number has not been picked yet. Okay. Has there anybody been close yet? Yeah, he said what one was close. close. We've had one that was uh, three numbers off. Heather Francis, who just joined us. Hi, Heather. That's Robert Gavati's better half. Ah, he's cheating. And Bobby is a fellow Ohioan Buckeye dredger relic hunter. This could be that one person that starts going one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> yeah, it is. Not saying nothing. <laughs> It'll take that long if they're good. Oops, Duke. That's a cool name. Yeah, that's a good name. We're yeah. down to a minute and 42, one, 40 seconds left. Come on. Come on. Why don't you just start guessing every number? <laughs> 19, 35, 17, 29, 1, 12, 41, 22, 86, 25, height, oh. <laughs> 46, 86. Do <laughs> ways can be so hard sometimes. I'll tell you. At least I didn't go to 500. Come on, guys. Yeah. You should have went one through ten. Somebody might have got it. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have 28 people in there, so we gotta go at least 28, huh? 87, 11, 27, 31. Uh, 31 in here now on mine. Yep. 99. 64, 99, 47, 19, 43. Eight, six, Luke, seven, Duke, you're late again. I think that's Jenny's seven, phone number. <laughs> <laughs> 79. Okay. Probably someone got it. Damn. One through 100. There you go. You got it. No, it's one saying, through 100. It's saying that one's bigger than 100. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh, right. You're right. You're right, Manny. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. Is not a number. <laughs> Chris, make a guess. Two, two, uh, two, two, six, five, 69, uh, five. Chris, you're too late on 65. What's that? The alarm clock for five minutes. Okay, we can stop. Who won? Closest number without going over. Without going over, good, good. our number. Tell me, tell me your number, Maddie. Hey, Somebody go. got 28, but it was 82. 82. Uh, <laughs> and it's backwards in the camera, so it's 82. But and I saw somebody had 79. Yes. Uh, I saw someone uh, had. 82. John Wolf had 79. Somebody had 76. But that's over. It's without um, going over, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, Without going over, so nice think... lower than 82, Dad. Yeah, they didn't go over 82. Yeah, I thought you said, but they went over. <laughs> Nobody. So John <laughs> Shaw was the first with. And we had John yes. Wolf with 79. Yeah, right at the very start, he had 79. There you go. And he said a 28. I was like, so. I was gonna say somebody got the thing backwards, but that we was. Had a... No, it doesn't show up backwards. It's not showing up backwards. It shows up as 82. Yeah, it shows yeah. up as 82. It did. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see everything's good. Okay. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Our screen is backwards. Okay. All right. right. So. Wait a minute. Now, I see somebody guessed 82 at 956. Was that after? Yeah, that was, was after. Over? That was after. <laughs> somebody guessed 44. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let me guess another. I'll wait for everybody to come up. Uh, with Wayne Peterson. Who else would do that, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. After. I, I have John Wolf's address. I'll get this mailed out to you, John. You, you can verify that, Dano. John was the first. At that number, yep, closest yep. to it, closest, closest to it. Thank you, Matthew and Maddie, for the hat for the giveaway. 
And if you catch their show on Facebook, you can win neat stuff like this right here. <coughs> Pardon me. Forget which camera uh, I had on. I want to give out a special hello to somebody. To me? Our, our, our gracious host in Indiana, Wendy Williams. How you doing? Hi, Wendy. She's over at my cookout this weekend. Oh, yes, she weekend. was. Yeah. Did you get her fat? We tried. <laughs> I fed her a big burger. I, <laughs> it was probably bigger than her. It I want to say yeah. something to Heather also, Heather and Bobby. I look forward to seeing you at Gold Rush Days also, guys. So... And we have our prospecting friend, Chris Price, in the room. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Can't wait oh, to see Spikes you out on the creek again here. And Mr. Spike Strike from Spike, Spike Little John from Spike Strike Prospecting Equipments in the house. What's that on top of the ground? What's that? Oh, it's a tungsten ring. Bye, oh. bye. Cool. Mm, someone's wife's mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we went when we went when we went out the tech thing, we were we were fine. My dad found a ring already, and he looked and the tech thing. I look at the ground I'm like, yeah, look, it's a spring. I pick it up, but it's a ring. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Oh, it was a ground find, huh? Yeah. It looks like somebody like put it on top of the ground. Like, I'm gonna leave you there. <laughs> you ever go out just uh, looking without a metal detector, just kind of looking around? Because I know some people do that. That's yeah. that's their game. I've seen some people doing that. They had little sticks in there poking around the dirt. Right. That they were looking for. Um, Indian. Arrowheads. Yeah. But we were metal detectors. Yeah. So like, you go look for your rings, we'll look for the arrowheads. And they found a few just sitting right on the ground. I have yet to find one, and yet I was at the same field that they were, and I was always looking at the ground. No, doesn't Aqua Jigger do that? What? Does, doesn't doesn't he go along the banks and just looks? Um, well, he goes in the water, too, right? I'm unsure. Yeah, I seen Aqua Trigger pull cell phones out and stuff like right, that. Right, right, right. Wallet that was in a bag. <laughs> oh. When we're out, what? sometimes there'll be clams that we pull up. And me and my dad, we really like to eat clams. So I'll, I'll look at them and I'll go, I wish I could eat this, but since it's in the bay, I can't eat it because it's poisonous. Well, it depends on which bay. Some of the places we go to, the water quality isn't as good, and they, they tell you not to eat the shellfish from that area. Um, <laughs> Luke Duke asked, do you find any arrowheads in New Jersey? They do? We have not. <laughs> It's the, mostly South Jersey. South, by the Delaware River, you, people find a lot. But I have yet to find any. I remember I somebody gave me this giant rock and said, this could have been in, this could, Indians could have used this to grind up different things. Here. I was like, oh, that's cool. Well, we got, and I, we brought it home. Right now but, it's in the garden. I'm not sure if it's actually <laughs> a grinder or just a regular rock. Oh. Yeah, I have a few artifacts like that. You know, uh, grinding stones and uh, worry rocks. What's a worry rock? You throw it at people and say... Is that like a flat rock that you rub your finger on? Yes. 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 Okay. Well, it's not flat, but it is it is round. And, and you can, when you, when you look at it, you can tell that's what it was used for because... It's just the way it's wore out. I have one in some pile around here. <laughs> How long you got a rubber rock for to wear it down? I don't know. Yeah. I imagine it depends on how worried you are. 
<laughs> That's a lot of worrying, man, if I rock it. Um, Bob Dip asks, have you found any shark's teeth? Um, um, yeah. When I was with True, we, and I found that lobster, the um, fossilized lobster, we were doing the, we were looking for shark teeth, and I found, a, me and my dad found a tongue. Not literally, but figuratively. A, a lot tongue. of them. Yeah. Any big megalodon teeth? Yeah. I remember no. you bought them one time. But... No, I bought him one. <laughs> but no, we never found a megalodon tooth. That, that'd be cool to find. I is sometime down in the Carolinas sometime I'd like to go look for megalodon teeth. So we watched the show where um Rich Savage was using a backhoe digging in uh, somewhere in Virginia and he found a megalodon tooth. They're like that big. The one that we got, it was one of the baby teeth of the megalodon. It was, it was about maybe like that big. Not big. But we have a mouth tooth. Well, you don't have a tooth like the side of megalodon? So is there is there any place is there any place or anything that, that that's like I know you're kinda young for a bucket list, but <laughs> is there any place that you'd like to go to in uh, Medley Tech? Yeah. I would like to go to Europe because their history goes all the way back to like B C over there. Right. So, so they got a lot of old stuff. Yeah, that would be cool oh. to find a, a old Roman horde somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and and the Spartans they had not, they had these really long rods, and that's what they used for currency, because it would be hard to steal that. They they made these giant rods, and that was the currency, because if someone tried to steal it from you, it would be hard to because they're so big. So did they just cut off a little bit of it every time they wanted to buy something? I guess so. I don't know much about them. But well, I know that some of the area in Europe is like you can't detect there. So my second option would be Australia because they got the big gold nuggets there. <laughs> that they do. And that would mean I, that would mean I get to put put use into my gold auction on my equinox so uh, so and, and with all the people that we've talked to over the, over the year uh, melee tactorists uh, treasure hunters the one thing that they always talk about is research do you do a lot of research I mean do you yeah. use a lot of different uh, apps and tools on the computer to help yeah. you locate yeah. All winter long, we do research. When we think okay. of it, we'll use historic aerials. We use uh, history books, local history books, lots of them. We found yeah. books where a guy was talking about going down a trail and ran into a little development in the middle of the woods. And I'll be, we went and found the trail, and we went and we found lots of coins there. Cool. Excellent. So, so Maddie, do you like doing the research? Um. Sometimes I'll go on, I'll go on to historic aerials and just look at different spots, right. see what they looked like back in the 30s. Right. That's the most research I do. Oh. <laughs> so you do the you do the visual. In other words, you look at the pictures and your dad does the reading. <laughs> yeah. We I mean, we we um we originally found this form and got permission for this form. Because we found an article about a guy named John Bacon back in the late 1700s that burned down these few houses, and he had gold pocket watches. Of, it was like a hundred thirty thousand dollars in the in that kind of money, and he buried it somewhere. And I thought I had it narrowed down to this piece of property, but we found Revolutionary War bullets. Coins, buttons, hundreds of buttons. I never found his money. And I mean, we even found one of the houses he burnt down. All the the, the exact house, one of the house, the cellar hole. And we still couldn't find the money. 
Yeah, I I uh, I like that uh, aerial. What was that aerial? Uh, historic History. aerials. Yeah, I got it right here. <laughs> I can remember. I can never remember the name of that. Uh, yeah, historic aerial photographs or photos. Yeah, it's like yeah that's it's that's a really cool site. Uh, especially when you can transpose it over Google Earth. Yeah. What was that, Maddie? It looks, it's like, it's like Google Earth, but you can go back in time with it. Right. Yeah, I know Jesse, like you say, he's talked about it before. I use like oldmaps.com and some other stuff along with Google Earth. I'll have to check out that one. And some of the old maps are great because a lot of the waterways that were here in Jersey, like creeks and, and stuff like that, are no longer here. Right. And on the ones, you'll find a map in the early 1800s that'll show a creek and it'll have a little tiny black square. And that was a homestead. Right. There. And those houses are no longer around because a lot of them were burnt down for forest fires. It's gone through the years. And um, we'll find where the old creek was and we'll follow it out and, we, and then we just start looking for old square nails and once you hit the old square nails you know you're there yeah like i said i use that and i've, I've found some uh some cellar holes historic aerials that's the name of it n-e-t-r online historical aerials historic aerials there's also an app called on x hunt on what Oh, I think I have that one too. X Hunt, and that tells you um, wherever you're at, who owns the property, so you can get permission to redact or good to know. You don't want to be on somebody's private property and then them uh, without permission. Right. Definitely. That's never good. And then they come out. Uh, then they come out at you with their five German shepherds. <laughs> That's yeah. never happened. It hasn't happened to you, though, Maddie. No, we we always make sure we have permission. As a matter of fact, we have a six thousand acre farm we've been detecting for the last five years. Um, when, and we've uh, only done about maybe two of the acres. <laughs> it takes. But, it, it's hard to do six thousand acres. I believe it. That's a lot of acreage. Yeah, it's like a mile. One way, a mile and a half, the other way, or something like that. It's, it's, it's a lot of acreage, and it, it butts up to two different rivers. One on one side, or two different creeks, and one on the other side. Now, now to me, uh, it seems like a a, a, a farm a field uh, would have a lot of broken tractor parts in it. <laughs> We pull up some tractor parts and buy pieces of plows, pitchforks. Um, I found uh, my real there. Um, oh, well, okay. I, you can find all kinds of things, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I found a one real. And I took um, a gentleman there and uh, and he found a gold coin on the same property. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, nice. I have yet to find one. Yeah. But yeah, I took two people out on two different occasions. And they found gold coins. <laughs> the one time we were leaving, and we let him stay there. He was going to stay there after a little bit, and we're okay with it. He said, to drive down the road, calls us up, and goes, We have to get back here quick. I got a gold ring. I got a gold coin. <laughs> yeah, um, somebody asked if we ever found an ox shoe, and they, yes, we have. Well, you have? have yeah. What? What's that? An ox shoe. It's. it's it's so it's fatter than the horseshoe. Oh. It's smaller. Yeah. So there's, it, it, there's a big difference in them in the two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When I first found one, you're like, "What? Are, what is this?" And I actually threw them in my scrap bucket. And somebody said, "Oh, those are ox shoes." And then there's also a thing called an ox knob, which I've actually thrown them away in the scrap bin. I didn't even know what they were until um, a friend, uh, Frankie Bonanno. He sent me pictures of them. He says, oh, you ever find these? And I'm like, yeah, they're trash. He said, no, they're ox knobs. And um, I forgot what they used for, though. You, you, 
the little knobs on the off that when you twist them, it opens up the door. No. <laughs> <laughs> the door knobs are not. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, somebody said we should hook up with stealth diggers. It'd be nice to hook up with a lot of different groups, but some of them aren't. It's just not. They're not close. I mean, but I that's it, and you know that's there's that's the same with us too. We meet a lot of people on here, and it would be really great to go hang out and and dig with them and look for gold or metal tech. But yeah, again, you know, distance. Yeah, we distance. just two three weeks ago we made a long trip all the way up to Vermont for a dig. We were asked to go to. Boy, was that a long drive. <laughs> well, the thing is, if I'm going to drive, like New Hampshire, I believe they're up in New Hampshire, that's seven hours for us. Now, yeah. Randy, it'd be nice to drive seven hours and go detect and we'll meet all these wonderful people and everything. But I can drive 20 minutes and find just as much here. So, you know, if they want to come my way, it'd be better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a long ways. That drive for me was over 15 hours. Um, <clears throat> I, we have a trip breaks. coming up. We plan on going to Florida in the spring and um, detecting uh, this group of guys called the New Age Goonies. I don't know yeah, if Michael Busy B. Detecting just said, Maddie, we love you in New Age Goonie family. I've heard of them. Oh, there they are right there. <laughs> That Michael Boyle, um, yeah, we, we plan on going down there either to, as soon as money has spring break. We're gonna head down there. We're gonna visit uh, Universal for two days. We're gonna detect for a couple days with Dwight, Gary Penta, and uh, the rest of them, the Nag family. Uh, Golden Pay Dirt Review said he'd collaborate with you guys if you're willing. He's from Staten Island. That's not that funny. I'm at detecting Staten Island already. Yeah. <laughs> we um actually have detected there before. Golden pay dirt reviews. So. See, the, I'm looking at all these names, and it's hard to determine who the person is by the name because they're using a totally different name on YouTube. And yeah, YouTube's a whole different beast than Facebook. Yes. Yeah. It's hard to tell who... I, I might know some of these people, like uh, Michael Busy B. I'm pretty sure that's Michael Boyle, but I'm not 100%. And Golden Page Reviews, I may know that person. I just don't know their names on this. Uh, yeah, uh, Golden Page Dirt Review, is, his name is Martin. I don't remember the last name. Martin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. He does pay dirt. He does pay dirt reviews. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hence the name. Golden hence Pater. the name. Yeah, actually, he he's also <laughs> on Facebook. Um, he offered to give a pay dirt bag away. And so I'd give a pay dirt amount a bag away from here, but you wouldn't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> It would just be a bag of dirt. Maybe I some, can I can do that too. <laughs> maybe some sand in it. <laughs> I remember when we went out to California, we bought a little bottle of pay dirt to try and find anything. We did everything and found nothing in it. It was just an empty thing of dirt. Oh uh, yeah, we went when we were out in California. I bought Maddie this little thing of black dirt. I guess it came from Washington State or something. And they said you take a magnet and then you find the gold in it that's left. <laughs> we didn't find anything. <laughs> you got rid of it. It was like five bucks. Or anything. I think they were just trying to sell dirt. But uh, it's pay Or we just didn't get lucky. We just got a bad one. No, uh, you probably did get some gold in there. You just didn't get it. You missed it. Like, well, we kept it. You still have it, right? Because I like put it. all the dirt back in the container and I gave it back. Good idea. Oh, uh, you got rid of it now? Uh. Uh. Okay. How about another giveaway, guys? 
sponsored by Golden Pay Dirt Reviews. Wow, that's cool. Very I'll cool. What's he giving he away? Just, he's, uh, he's a fairly new uh, member. He just subscribed not too long ago, didn't he? Yeah, he's he's fairly new to our family. Um, I forget how long ago, but we're glad he's part of it. Definitely. Um, let me see. I can't talk to you, my friends, here without all you out there hearing. So, give me a numbers to go from one to what? Jesse, Dano, Maddie, what do you think? Let's do, uh, because 50. we have how many people in the room right now? 50. We have, we think, 20, 30, 27, 30 or so. Let's do 50. Not yet, Wayne, Bob, not yet. Okay, <laughs> one through 50. One through 50, you got three minutes. Okay, wait, let me start the timer. So yeah, all those yet. don't count yet. Who's picking the number? I did. Okay, good. How, <laughs> three <laughs> minutes, Jesse? Yep, let's do it quick. Okay, start now. Can I guess? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna guess thirty five point two five one six. I win. Uh, okay, we'll we'll start from Dano's comment. Too well, high, Ron. Now. Do it again, Ron. Too okay. high, Ron. One through fifty. One through fifty. <laughs> I guessed on that. <laughs> I guess we didn't win. He was <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing it yet. You failed. All right. If it's too high, you got to go with like this number. Let's try that. <laughs> Well, I got the perfect number. Let me see. Oh. Hi. 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 <laughs> Here, I, I can bring up this chat so they could see it. I got the perfect number. I didn't pay attention. Right, to I'm just going to start guessing numbers from 1 up to 50. <laughs> There's a 1, 2, 3. Four. They're not going to pick you, Dad. Too late, Are Wayne. They? Somebody <laughs> picked it before you. They're just going to ignore you. No. Oh. Uh -oh. We got it. Got it? Yeah. Yeah, Bro. we got it. Was it Bob? Here, let me show my display. I oh, can't really see it there. Let me see who got it first, because every chat would be different. The chat room would be different from what, no. Mine would be what we're going by. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Where's Dano's comment I'm looking for? There it is. And we have. Run for the hills with number 49. 40. Uh, yeah, he, must have, he must have made about five or six guesses. David Villa <laughs> was that far away. So close, David. So close. Okay, Ron, our good friend Ron <laughs> from Ron for the Hills Mining out of Massachusetts. Um Congratulations. Golden yeah. Pay Dirt Reviews emails in the room. I shouldn't have popped out that chat. It messed up my connection. Time and up. the time's up. Time's <laughs> up. I guess 49. <laughs> I guess 1.7 something in the chat. <laughs> Jaron 3.14. Pie. Oh, you and your pie, Jerry. 
Is it apple pie? <laughs> hey, mm, I'd one, go for some apple pie. What's that one thing from Back to the Future? Um, one point one. One point twenty one gigawatts. <laughs> <laughs> what's a gigawatt? All right. Um. Let me get get his email up here again. I just had it here. I think I passed it. Let's see his web page. Oh, here it is. It's uh, goldenpagerreviews at gmail.com. Okay, I, I'm going to make you a moderator really quick, Golden Martin. So you can type in your URL and you can type in your email address, even though Jesse already said it. And this is a temporary clearance. You can't do <laughs> it for life. <laughs> <laughs> Our security clearances usually only last for a little while. <laughs> It'll self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> yeah. So use it as quick as you can and get out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Martin, for uh, your donation for the giveaway. And thank yes. you very much, Matthew and Maddie, for the hat I'll be sending to John Wolf. Larry's um, got a wrench by his name now. Yeah, I should. Uh, I should. I should have uh, Golden Pay Dirt Reviews send me a bag of his Golden Pay Dirt Reviews so I can review his Golden Pay Dirt Reviews. Yeah, he, <laughs> I'm game for that too. Man, everybody <laughs> likes a bag of dirt, huh? Yeah, we can review his Pay Dirt Review bags. I'd definitely <laughs> give a good review. Wow. Or at least go through it and, and give a, if, if a you honest review. Hey, if you haven't watched his uh, painter reviews, he does a really nice job. I mean, it's not, he doesn't show a ton of pan and he doesn't show you hours of, you know, swirling a pan. He goes through it pretty quick, does a pretty honest, good review. For, you know, I've seen some reviews and some are good and some are so good but his is his is worth watching if you're interested in any particular type of uh uh pay dirt and from what i understand the pay dirt he buys he he does it in such a way that they don't know who's buying it he uses his girlfriend's email and money oh i mean uh i don't know if he uses her money but <laughs> <laughs> I would. Well, you know. <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, check them out. If you want to check out, you might be thinking about getting a, a bag of pay dirt from somebody. You want to know what they're like. Check his web page, his YouTube page, and you're liable to find that particular brand there. Well, speaking of pay dirt, let's go into this next audio commercial. Sounds good. Hey, this, this is, is Michael, Michael from MyPainterGold.com. You know, I love to receive emails and photos of gold my friends recover from our painter. Are you going? They're not too shy to tell me about it either. Just check out some of the reviews, photos, and even videos that they have posted on our Facebook page. In fact, here are some of my not-so-shy friends now. I'm Aaron, and I pan for gold. I'm Caleb, and I pan for gold. I'm Ben Martin. I pay for gold. I'm Aaron and I pay him for gold. I'm James and I pay him for gold. I'm Jen and I pay him for gold. I'm John and I pay him for gold. I'm Mark and I pay him for gold. I'm Tony and I pay him for gold. This is Rob from Nashville and I pay him for gold. Be sure to check our Facebook page and website for the latest offers, blog articles, and videos. What's in your pan? I hope, I hope it's, it's Peter from ipanforgold.com. That was our buddy MDV from ipanforgold.com. Um, I'm sure Martin's done one from his. And I'm 
pretty sure he got a good review. <laughs> we got two masks of everybody. Let's see. <laughs> and I pan for copper. Where at, Bob? Where do you pan for copper? Midwest? Sorry, I'm reading the chat room for a second. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> So is there is there any particular Maddie or Matthew? Is there any particular item that you would love to find that you just can't wait to find? Just you would just die if you'd found it. Um, gold yeah. gold coin. Well, gold coin. Well, any gold coin? Yes. Yes. <laughs> just a gold coin. Even a modern gold coin. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> so, I said I would die if I found it. No, <laughs> no, not quite that. Not that quite. Dr not I quite that dramatic. All over. <laughs> if I found a hole of lava, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd love to find a gold coin too. Yeah, me too. Who wouldn't? Oh, a bunch man. of them, preferably. No, it, a whole spill, right? Yeah. Yeah, a nice big engagement ring with a fat diamond on it. Like that. Would. <laughs> That'd be nice. A doubloon. Or uh, pieces of eight would be cool. Uh, where is Maddie's favorite? Piece he likes. So which one do you got? Like, place. Out of all this right yeah. here? Oh, oh place? I think oh, it's P L C E. Place. Place. You know, it's, the place it attacked is a field. Because you don't have to worry about much getting in the way of your coil. You don't have to worry about the old, about not being able to see your coil or your screen. Just nice, wide open. There you go. Excellent. I I like going wherever I could find something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm besides, trying to ask a question. Besides a pool tabs. Here on <laughs> uh, is there anybody that you'd, you'd like to go metal detecting with? Someone that you, you watch on YouTube or uh, feel it would be really awesome to go learn something from? I'd like to go detecting KG and Ringy one day. <laughs> oh, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. They're also one of I got into detecting. Have you met them? No. No? That's it. Okay, uh, Brian from American Gold Prospectors, Matthew, you could probably help him out with that. Has any of them used? An expensive detector like the Mine Lab 5000 is it worth the money? Um, I'm hearing the GPZ is worth the money. People are finding a lot of gold with that, but I've, I've never used the 4500 or the 5000. Uh, I think it's the GPC 7000. People are finding. I'm hearing that there's there's a, such a demand for them overseas because people are finding a lot of gold with them. Uh, yeah, uh, gold Brian or raw gold or or should I say wild gold? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, nuggets. No, oh, cool. Uh, Brian pretty much does gold prospecting full time. Should have seen the beautiful nugget he found up in Maine. Oh man. Oh, up on No Tellum Creek in Maine. And Bobby Dip said, my favorite place to do the outhouse. 
Are you a privy digger, Bob? <laughs> I I saw some guys digging up an old 1800s PV um, in Washington State, and they pulled up some nice stuff, nice stuff, including a Colt Peacemaker. Nice. Huh. Wait, the person that said that they like going, they like um, one place they like to go to that house. Is that because they did that one, that one gold thing where they have to eat? <laughs> did you do the nugget brain challenge, Bob? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> hey, well, you know, maybe they did it one time and forgot to use the pan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So do you guys, have you ever uh, dug privies out? No, I have never done it. I mean, uh -huh. I was on a job site where they were digging and they hit a privy, but we weren't allowed to take anything. They had to call the Historical Society in and they got everything. Of course. They always do that. Yeah. So what's, uh, Bob, Bob Dip wants to know, what's the funniest thing you ever found? I think he said funny things you find there. In an oh, well, no, but, well, yeah, yeah no. but that's a good question nonetheless. What's the funniest thing you've ever found? The funniest thing that I have ever found. Hmm. I have to say. <laughs> that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, you pull it out of the ground. And if you're a, tech, a whole cold heart detector, that's. That's an impossible question. <laughs> no, I've actually dug a frog out of the ground in the winter. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, they hibernate. <laughs> oh, um, hold on. Right after this question, I want to say something. Why don't you just say it? Okay. We were out detecting the water, and a, and a guy walks up to us, and he goes, I've been out detecting here before. You want, if you get any big iron signals, you might not want to dig it. And and my dad goes, Why? He says, Do you know you know what a waffle is? Pineapple. A pineapple? And my dad goes, No, he goes, it's a military term for grenade. Right. He dug up a grenade, he kept hitting mm. it onto his shovel to try and figure out what it was. It was, <laughs> it, was it was encrusted, the piece came off, he saw the pattern, and he walked and apparently he said he walked he threw it as far into the water as he could. Well, uh, fortunately, as long as the pin still is in it, you're not going to have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Although, it could have been rusted shut. It could have been. And it's been in the salt water for who knows right. how long. And it, I would think that at one point it had to have penetrated it. And then it yeah. probably not. It's probably not there, I, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're not watertight. Yeah, Although they are tight. I don't know if they're watertight. Now, that leaves me with three questions. One, why is there a grenade in the bay? Two, why would you throw it as far out into the water as you can? And three, um, yeah, you only have one, two questions, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would throw it. I, I, question three. Why did I say I had a question three? <laughs> well, here's, um, I don't know why on those three questions, but Spike Strike Prospecting Equipment Gold, a friend dug a privy in Nome, found a $20 gold piece. 1900s. Wow. Well, I'm jealous. What a find. Well, well I, I mean, think, think about it. They used uh, to stash a lot of their valuables in the outhouse. Right. Because right. who's going to dig through you-know-what, <laughs> unless you're doing the Nugget Brain Challenge, of course, right. to, of course. you know, I, I, I mean, guess. I mean, I've you. gone to the bathroom and spilled change. <clears throat> Yeah, mm -hmm. drop your phone oh. in them. And... <laughs> I was listening to the radio, and a guy went to use the bathroom, 
He said that when he sat down and he flushed the toilet, all of the money from his pocket went into the toilet and got flushed down. I've never had that problem. <laughs> and it was like 400 and something dollars. You gotta have money to lose it. Wow. <laughs> That's okay. a lot of money to flush down a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> he walks up to a security guy and goes, is this some kind of trap to make sure, is this some kind of trap in the system? He goes, there ain't no trap. You're out of luck. Well, actually, there is, and the guy was just cheating him out of his... Probably. Bill Potter found it. Huh. That's cool. Now, Spike Littlejohn from Spike Strike Prospecting Equipment and uh, in South Carolina, I believe it is. Maybe North Carolina. Carolina's nonetheless. He has some good stories, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, my big brother says, that's poo, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hear, I hear people find a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, but you gotta be a, like like Wayne says. You gotta be a a real treasure hunter. You gotta be really dedicated. <laughs> MacGyver. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff. My wife flushes money down the toilet all the time. I think. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes alive. Uh. I know it's getting late for you guys. I know you have to wake up at like 4 a.m. I believe yeah. you told me the other night, Matthew. Uh, yeah. We've been on the air now for two and a half hours. Uh, a lot longer than we were talking about last night, actually. Um, <laughs> I hope you two had a great time, and I hope you two come and join us again. We will. Thank you. And... Join us in the live chat sometime. Um, I'd like to thank all of you out there who's joined us through the night. And congratulations to the winners on the hat, Digging with Maddie, provided by Maddie and Matthew. And the pay dirt, provided by Golden Pay Dirt Review. Um, anything else, guys? Uh, no. Thanks for there. Gold Rush Days, don't forget Gold, gold Rush, Rush Days. days. Yep, oh, don't forget yeah. Gold Rush, guys. It's going to be fun. We're going to have our uh, Take a Bet Prospecting Project going on. That's right. Stop and say hi. And yep, we'll be there all weekend. Yep. Um, also, someone mentioned about going to the gold show oh, in yeah. Georgia. If you're Georgia, the Georgia gold show has been canceled. I got notification today by Sonny uh, due to not enough participation from the from the chapters the, from the chapters down there. So, but the uh, the the Ohio one is still going on. That's at the end of the month of October. Just come to it. Right. We'll be there. Yeah. We'll be there in the painting booth. All right. We'll be in the painting we'll booth. We'll be there in the painting booth and the dream mat booth, right? Ooh, Jesse? the dream right. mat booth. Yes. So yeah. come visit us at either location and maybe is what's her name still going to be there? I haven't heard any different that she's. I haven't heard that she has. Is, right. But it's been changed. So at this point, yeah, she's still there. But okay. Um, what's her name? I, Something Rydell. Emily Rydell. Emily Rydell will be also at the panning zone, the Felix Pay Dirt Pan Zone. And if you come, make sure to come by and say hi to us. And. Let us know. Anything else, guys? I think we're there now. That's it. Oh, I think that's it. Hey, well, you know what? Uh, uh, one more pitch for Maddie's show. When's yes. your next show, Maddie? It's the 26th. It's on the 26th. 
on Sunday at 7 p.m. All right. And if you want to visit their Facebook group, the link's down below. Head over to their YouTube channel. The link's also above their Facebook group in the description below. Thank you all for joining us tonight. You all out there make it worthwhile. We really appreciate you taking your time to spend with us every Tuesday night. Um, and until next week, let me see. Who are we having on next week? Uh, I need to get a confirmation for it, but we're scheduled to have Joey Wilson of, uh, of Adventures in Prospecting out of Oralville, California. Next week, Jim. Next week, big brother. Next week. So, uh, my big brother lives close to Oroville. He shops at Joel's place all the time. Joey's place. Joey Wilson. Uh, but until then, may you always have a flash in your pan. And you know what he's going to say next. That's yes, right. Sir. Maybe one day, too, we'll see you on the river. Good night, everybody. Good night, right. folks. Night, everyone. Night, Ed. Night, Dan. Night, Night, Jesse. Night, Night, everybody. Hang on a little, if you would, Maddie and Maddie, Matthew. Oops. Every day on a bigger day.